importantly for y'all than it will for the journey, right? So in, in a lot of ways, there's no reason why you can't learn it first because it, it's not a linear progression. It doesn't it depend on anything. It's probably better to learn it out of the word. I started doing this with another class and I realized that you know, learning the option method first is, is in some ways easier because you don't have the same the same hangups on using a nameplate value instead of using a table value after taking the ratings on like the range example and um, dryer. So we're going to start with um, it's 220.82. We're also going to go back and do um, the neutral derating real quick, so that we can kind of uh, talk about that a little bit and get that out of the way. The 220.82 is the uh, beginning of the optional method, and uh, it, it's on page 67 is where it starts. Okay, it, it, for the most part, all you're going to do is under section B. We're going to take the square foot of the dwelling, just like we would do in a, a standard method. We'll take the square foot of the dwelling, and we're going to multiply 3 volt amps for each one of the square feet. So let's say I had a, we'll just use a 3,200 square foot example, okay? So at 3,200 square feet, at 3 VA, I end up with 9,600 VA as a connected load for the lighting. And that's effectively kind of our, our step one. And if you're following along with the, the line items in B there, you'll see that B1, uh, I believe, is the same, basically the same notes. Let's see, 220. Uh, oops, not too far. 220. Here it is. So B1 is a 3VA uh, per square foot. And then under section two, in Article 210, we're required to have a minimum of four required 20 amp branch circuits. Four of them. And for those four, those are the two small appliances, two kitchen uh, rooms, the laundry room, and the bathroom, right? In 210. Yes. In 220, when we're talking about calculating the demand against the service, we only have to take into account the first three of those as a, you know, a demand on the service itself. The bathroom, you know, you can have some high amperages, so you need a high enough, you know, circuit to handle all of the load, but it's a short duration load, so we don't have to worry about the compensation against the service, which is, you know, a much bigger concern in the kitchen areas and the laundry areas where you've got irons and, you know, the countertop mounted cooking equipment that's beyond for quite some time. So, to this value here, we're going to add 4,500 VA total, and that's for the two small appliance circuits. One and two and one laundry. For you guys only, laundry circuits sometimes in multifamily dwellings may be excluded right here if you have common provisions for laundry facilities that people have access to. But that's it. In single family, you can never take it out. It's always going to be, there's no exception in, in the rule for single family dwelling. In this case, we'd have to have no matter what. Um, I don't know what that slide is, but it makes sense. That is a. Yeah, yeah. Well, I tell you, I, I love that slide. It's a, uh, it's a motor control. I thought you were gonna do it right there. That's from the. That's from, that's a, that's a how the Houston boys do that. <laughs> Step B1, this is step B2 here. 
Now, in the standard method, we stop right there and we apply our first demand factor. All right. However, <laughs> under the optional method, we keep trucking. We are going to take a value of 100% of the first 10,000, which is a bigger number than we use for standard method, which is just 3,000. And then what's left over above that, we're going to take it 40%. But we're not going to do that until we've gone through every bit of B. So B3 then becomes all your nameplate ratings. And again, what differs here is that we don't have a minimum on the dryer here. We don't use the dryer tables. We don't use the range tables. We just add in the nameplates and keep going. Okay. So under B, we'd have a nameplate for any anything's fast in place, permanently connected, or located in a specific circuit. So that's you know dishwasher, disposal, anything like that, motor load or not. And then ranges, wall mounted ovens, counter cooktop uh, or counter mounted cooktop units. And then under C, clothes dryers not connected to the laundry circuit. And then additionally, water heaters specifically on number four. And then the last one is no, excuse me, under D. No four is the nameplate of any permanently connected loaders, motors not included in item three. The, uh, I you stop there. You stop there. Now, the, the one thing is the, you know, in the standard method, under, you know, part three, we take a 25% increase on the largest motor in the group, right? That is a separate and distinct part than what we're under here. So unless there's clear directions under this uh, article, that's not part of this step. And there's nothing in here that, that would give us uh, any kind of rule to do that. So we're going to add then in this case if we had a, you know, uh, fastness place appliances. Let's just say that we had a uh, disposal that was a you know, let's say it was a uh, 2,000 watt disposal, and then a dishwasher that was 1,500. A you know a range uh, of a micro combo that was 1,200, and then um, water heater at, at uh, 4,500. All right. So these fast in place appliances here all go under B3. And then you know the A, B, C, D. If we had a range, which we'll add in here at uh, 8,000 for the range, and a dryer for uh, 4,500, these would fall under, um, I think that's, uh, what is it? C is closed dryers, and B is the ranges. And then D would be the water heater, which I have right here. And then finally, after all that's done under B3, which is the largest of them, we've got the last line item, which is any other motor not that's permanently or fast in place that's not already listed here. So we had a sump pump motor or something else with a dad, but in this case we're good. All right. Now the uh, uh, the, the brake stops right there, and this is where we apply our demand factor. So go through here then and add all this together. So 9,000 plus 4,500 is 14,000. Uh, 14, 14, one. Plus, you know, we've got. Two, three, four, uh, 4,700 here. 9,000 between those two, which is 16,700 plus 8. 24, 7, right? Did I get that right? Off the top of my head? Is it 24, 7? What? Oh, well, you had the 14, 4,100, right? I'm just talking about block there. I've got to try myself. Two, three, four. 47, uh, 4700, 9 makes it uh, 13700 plus 8, oh yeah, way off, 27 something, way off, uh, 2000 plus 1200 plus 1500, then the two water, the water heater, the dryer both together is 9000, and then 8000 for the rain. Now, that's 21700 is what I got, so 21700. Now, I'll tell you, um, all of these zeros in here, every one of these, convert them to KW before you even start adding them because they'll save you a whole lot of time. So when you're running through there, it'd be 9.6 plus the uh, 4.5 plus, you know, and here again, if you can combine them, it saves you steps too. So you got, you know, 4, 7, 4, 
plus the nine to the water heater and the dryer plus uh, uh, the 8,000 Ranger State. And I messed up the number and it's something weird because I've got way too big. Plus the, uh, okay, yeah, two, three, four, four, seven. And I have the nine plus the eight gives me 35.8 or 35.8 kW. Yeah. This is as good a place as any to convert it to VA. Again, it doesn't, doesn't require any kind of math. So instead of doing watts here, I'm going to do 